A few months back, I made this Jeep, and uh, the challenge was to make a wind-powered vehicle from a Hot Wheels Willys Jeep, and this is what I came up with. I think I did a pretty darn good job, and you can see some close-up pictures on my Instagram. The link's on my channel. Looking at this sail and the way that it attaches to the car, I thought it would make a really great video to show you guys exactly how I did it. Today, we're going to use this Hot Wheels Triumph 6. And I haven't used one of these yet, but I do like the detail on here. And you can see there's some nice panel lines, nice things here and there to give it that pop. I'm sure it'll be great. So let's get it open and start making our wind-powered car. Okay, and here we are. Let's pop this thing open. Fairly simple. We got three pieces here. We got the top. We're going to have to open a hole, right? About there. The post is under there, so we might run into that later. Okay, thinking about wheels. Generally, when I start a build, the first thing I do after I pop open the casting is search through my wheels box to see what kind of stance we want to give this vehicle. And I looked, and I looked, and looked, and looked, and looked, and I looked. Nope. Nope. Uh-uh. Nope. Nope. No again. Nope. No. Nope. Okay, I just looked through this whole box and found no good wheels. But I did find these plastic hardware pieces. I think these are for some cabinetry. Like you might put to hold up shelves. Anyways, they have these really nice ridges on them and the outside looks like a hubcap. If we let it poke out just a little bit like that, I think that'll be really cool to look like something that'd be crawling around in the sand or on some dry earth. And lucky me, I have four of them. Perfect. Just pop these off. Little preview of what it might look like. Ah. Okay, so they're a little bit long, and I need to cut them about in half. But this process was ridiculous. These plastic pieces were so hard. I tried so many different tools to try to cut them open. What worked in the end was a combination of my hobby saw and uh, snips there. And I'm happy with that. It looks like a good amount of wheel sticking out. Here it is propped up so you can get an idea of the stance. All right, so looking at the way this mast connects with the car, there's a hole where the engine was before, and there's this kind of bracket of rusty iron steel over that hole. So using this sail to give us an idea of where we need to open that hole. I think we're going to put it on the side. We don't want to block the driver's view. There's no passenger seat anyways. We're going to need to open up a square hole here, or more or less square. And I'm going to show you how to do that without anything more than a drill and some files. I don't actually have a jeweler's saw. Actually, now that I mention that... All right, jeweler saw is on the way. I just ordered one on Amazon, but that will not be here for this build. So we're using this. Got my pin vise. Start to drill into where we're gonna make our hole. Okay. And we'll just try one a bit bigger. Get it? A bit. 
We're just stepping up with larger and larger bits to make the whole bit bigger. Now I'm taking this all, and all I'm going to do is put a mark in each corner to give us our square outline, and drill out those corners. I couldn't do the fourth one, the post is right underneath there, so I'd be drilling for quite a while. That's okay, it'll give us a nice irregular shape. And here's the car with some paint stripper on it. You can watch the paint coming off live. So someone recently asked me about the paint and how I get the paint off the cars. I'm using a brand called Holtz, and I did some searching on the internet. I could not find it outside of Japan online. Surely any automotive paint stripper would be the same. That's what this is meant to be. Uh, although it is pretty toxic stuff, I'm doing this in my back shed with both doors open. But if you're looking for a paint stripper that's a little bit more eco-friendly and friendly to your body, uh, I did put an Amazon affiliate link in the description of the video where you can find a product called Citrus Strip, which is what all my friends use in the States. I can't get it here, unfortunately, but check it out. Use the Amazon affiliate link. I do get a little portion of the revenue from that sale, but it doesn't cost you any extra and it helps me continue to make videos like these. Here we are. Gluing on these wheels. Now the first three were pretty much okay to eyeball, but this fourth one, you can see how this this will rock. The car will rock back and forth if this isn't in the right height. So, I set it on the mat to the height that it needs to be. And luckily the car is open, so we can just put the super glue applicator straight in and glue the fourth one on. Alrighty, we're back onto the mast mount. We'll cut a section of this 5mm styrene tubing. Oh, I almost forgot. Putting a skewer in there will keep the piece from flying away. Here we are. I think I want to put this recessed into the hole. So with the Jeep, it was sitting on top. get rid of that post there and the shavings from filing I'm actually gonna hold on to for now and brush them over to the side of my cutting mat. You'll see those come in later and now we're on to some styrene work. So I have this one millimeter piece underneath. It's just wide enough to fit that pipe on top while still showing some hole around the bracket. And we'll reinforce with some of these distressed pieces of styrene. And here's where those shavings are coming in. So, rather than using baking soda in this location, I decided to try something I've done a couple times in the past, and that is putting the shavings from the diecast car into the super glue. It has a similar effect, allowing it to cure quicker, and it provides texture. And if you get a little bit too much on there, you can just scrape it off. But we'll go ahead and do that on the other side as well. And the idea that I had about this is that it might be bolted or riveted through the hood. So time for some more of that riveting content y'all are subscribed for. And as always, I like to lay out my pieces with the plastic cement. It's not actually gluing it to the die cast body. I'll come back and add a little super glue, solidify everything on there. Okay, now this next idea that I'm about to start working on is kind of a windscreen. I got an idea to put some mesh in the corner just where the driver is. So it'll cover in front of the driver and on the side of the car, but not all the way across. So here I'm super gluing in the post and putting some more of those shavings on, clipping it to height, adding some more styrene on the side there to support the mesh, add some in the front, and today we're going to be using this 
really fine mesh. It's almost a little bit too fine. If you get any paint or super glue in the holes, it clogs up really fast. You gotta get it out of there. So I'll cut off a triangular piece here and start gluing it on. This time I'm opting for baking soda for a smaller texture. Wrap it around the front there and then I will trim the top, giving some little uneven cuts here and there to give a frayed appearance to the top, like so. And there we go, our mesh is complete. Let's cover up this part under the grill here. I thought I might use some sanding mesh, but then I had a better idea. This is the serrated cutter from an aluminum foil package. It is sharp metal, so be careful when handling this, but I take some needle nose pliers that have a nice flat edge, and I start to roll over in the center. I don't really like those circles that are in the middle, so by putting them on the fold, they kind of disappear. And then I'll give this little guy his sharky mouth, a couple rows of teeth in the front there. Look at that. And that sanding mesh isn't lost. I ended up putting it on the rear of the car. And to go with his sharky mouth, I gave him a little sharky tail. I feel like I made something else that was sharky recently. Oh right, my spray bottle project. And we'll give him some fins on here as well. Okay, now let's get started on making a sail. So basically, the last time I started with some brown paper bag and these barbecue skewers to make the mass. I don't actually have brown paper bag, but I had an idea looking around my craft room to use this cardboard. Now if you peel it off of the corrugation like this, you get this brown paper that may or may not be too thin. This one's a little too thin. Let's try that again. There we go. The idea being that everyone has cardboard, but you might not have a brown paper bag. And I'm just gonna crumple this up, open it back up again, do that a few different times, get a bunch of nice texture in there you can see. And then all you need to do after that essentially is to saturate it with super glue and that will harden up the paper so that it won't be damaged. You just gotta be careful because it might make some fumes. If you use too much super glue at once, you don't wanna put this near your face either. You can get some chemical burns. And I actually started one earlier here, my test piece, because this is the first time I'm doing the cardboard instead of brown paper bag. Uh, and this piece doesn't have any printed text on it. So we'll mock up where this is gonna go. I opted for a more bent sail this time versus the straight of the Jeep. There we go, glue the two pieces together. A Little bit of baking soda on that super glue. Don't forget the baking soda. And here's our outline. The size and scale looks good. Let's go on to making the sail. So I want to find a good edge. This one looks pretty good. I think we'll start here and we'll draw a reference line on the inside. We want this to be a little bit smaller than the inside size of the wood. Cut off those extras, give a nice jagged edge on that side. And to give the frayed look, I start by cutting diagonally and then turning about 90 degrees and cutting the other way just to give some nice serrations and frayed edge. All right. So the next step is going to be to take a sharp object and poke holes where we're going to put our wire. Okay. And I recommend if you're using a brown paper bag to make the holes now before you add any super glue. The reason for that is that you can get some nice wavy natural contours to the sail if you add the glue after it's tied on with wire. And you'll see in a little while I actually have some trouble with this cardboard being a bit too thin. 
And here we have some copper wire. This is 0.5 millimeter copper wire. What we'll do is we'll thread it through one of those holes, preferably in the corner here, wrap it around the mast and secure it in place with some super glue. This will be our start point that we can work out to either side from this point. So the issue I was talking about having here was that the paper was a bit too thin and when I went to cinch down the wire wrapping it tended to tear out and you might need to trim these ends as you go up the mast, they get in the way. So due to some of that tear out I decided to add super glue as we went and watch this one. Holy moly look at that smoke. Guys, you do not want to be breathing this in. I have the windows open. I have a fan going. You can wear a respirator if you need to. You do not want this gas in your lungs. Let's finish up these wire wrappings. Solidify everything up with some super glue. We don't want those moving down the skewer. And we'll set it to dry. Okay. I almost forgot this detail. You can see I already primed the interior. But I went ahead and added a steering wheel. Just a metal ring there. And these are our parts. So let's get this sail dirty. You can see I didn't prime the sail because it's already a nice natural color. We're actually just going to use some washes. And I have a black wash here and a brown wash that I'm mixing up from some burnt sienna and water. Bloop. And my technique here is to just lay on some brown and then blend it with black. put on some more brown and blend it with black and basically iterations of that get a lot of wash on the wood there too we don't want that bright light wood color here I added some paint into the mix to give a little bit more color there the washes were not thick enough and I just decided to use a heat gun because I needed these washes to dry so I could layer them you could wait for it to dry but uh, I'm not that patient and the heat gun instantly dries them. So you can see I'm working up some layers here. I've had people tell me about the other sail car, the Jeep, that this actually looks like leather. Which I can see as well and you might implement this in some tabletop craft with leather in mind. Let's paint up the chassis and those wheels. I'm using my trusty burnt iron I'll hit all the other metal parts with that burnt iron as well. And I'm going for a green khaki on the body. And right now you might be saying that looks very dark and there's not a lot of contrast. And we'll address that later. I'm going with a yellowy beige on the interior. There's a tank in the passenger seat area that I painted red and hit those roll bars with some matte silver. In hindsight on this build I probably could have uh, scratch built a roll bar. I probably would have elevated this build a little bit. You can just tell that it's uh, original to the casting. But I detailed up the interior here and now that some of the paints dry I'll bring out the brown washes, hit the metal with a silver dry brush and then brown wash. And now we're going to deal with that green. So I have this lighter green, just a cheap craft paint, and you can see the difference there. What I'm going to do is put some paint on the brush, wipe most of it off, and then I'm going to stipple it on. Stipple, 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 stipple. Kind of like dry brushing, but you're adding some little blobs of paint here and there to spread around. Uh, basically looking like texture when there is no texture. I can't remember where I saw this technique used, but I'm sure it's not original to me. Alright, and speaking of dry brushing, we're going to dry brush the sail to hit some of those highlights. I have a cheap beige craft paint here. Go over all the edges and high points. 
Looking good. All right, so time for weathering and rust. If you haven't seen my El Camino build, check it out. I go into full depth and description of my rust and weathering techniques. Hello there, I completely forgot to paint this rear bumper. No worries, we'll just make it rusty. I'm really happy with the weathering on this front armor plate. And as I weather the car, you can see I'm weathering my hand. Speaking of hands, you could use your hand to like and subscribe, or you could use both hands to comment down below something you like about this build. Or don't like. Okay, we're gonna use some dust. Please wear a dust mask. These are my weathering powder, made from dollar store chalk pastels that I crushed up in a mortar and pestle. And I'm just gonna hit all over. You can see there's a done side and the pre-dust side, dust side, pre-dust side. Get some dust on these wheels, of course on the base. And we'll put some subtle dusting on the inside there. Who has an open top car in the desert? Don't forget to paint those tail lights with some clear red. And with the headlights, I'm going for a yellow and wiping most of it off so the silver is still shining through. And now it's time to glue everything together. Put a little drop of super glue here and there. And there we go, it's all solid. Only one last thing to do, and that is the rigging. So we'll take some very small sewing thread here. Using a color that you won't have to paint, I used brown this time. I have a little metal ring here that I will loop through and secure on the end like so, and fix it in place with just a dot of super glue. That'll loop over the skewer on the bottom there. And this next part is sped up to, I believe, eight times. And I cut out some parts. This was a nightmare. I threaded it through the bars. I put it in the cab. It ends up looking pretty good, but it was a huge hassle. I, I ended up looping it and tying it around the stick shift of the car. Not needed any longer when there's no engine and the perfect distance for the driver to manipulate the sail. And you can see it there. Pretty good. There we go. This baby's ready. Give you a last little detailed view here and there. I love how the grill turned out. That toothy armor in the front. Rusty back bumper. Nice little mesh. You can see the interior there with the steering wheel. And here are some finished shots of the build. I want to thank everyone for watching, subscribing, getting all kinds of huge support for the channel, and it's really great. I'm glad you're here enjoying the videos. Please comment down below, and I'll see you on the next build.